Welcome to the channel. We have a pretty exciting bike today here in the beautiful California coast in this dedicated bike trail. We have Milod's DK300 Pro and it has two cool things. One is a dual battery and the other thing it has dual suspension which you don't see on a lot of the more budget friendly moped style e-bikes. Um, some quick facts about this thing. The dual batteries they total up to 30 amp hours. It's a 48 volt system with 30 amp hours of battery. Uh, they claim about 100 miles of range. We're going to see today. Uh, it has dual suspension, uh, front and rear. It has hydraulic disc brakes, which is a nice little bonus. It has a 750 watt hub motor back here that peaks to 1200, uh, which is really awesome. It has, it's pretty peppy. I, we've already been riding it a little bit and it's very peppy. Uh, it also has a cool uh, 2.5 inch color LCD display here, which has Bluetooth integration, will, which will allow you to do turn by turn directions from your phone. It also has a twist throttle, a horn, high and low beam headlights, high and low beam headlights, and it has four inch wide by 20 inch knobby tires. Um, if you're unfamiliar with this company, Milod, they've been making bikes for other brands for years, and now they've finally decided to take their own designs and put their own brand on it. So we're gonna take it for a ride today. This is the app, and it has its own mapping software. So I've set the directions to where I wanna go here, and you can see uh, through Bluetooth connectivity, it's giving me directions and distances. It doesn't actually show you a picture of a map, but a much more simplified uh, just left and right and how far you need to go uh, till you need to make your next turn. Now, uh, on the app, I wanted to bring up some things. One, the app is called Bike Go. Um, so it's this right here, Bike Go, B-I-K-E-G-O. And once you get the Bike Go app, um, then you go into the menu here and set on your Bluetooth connectivity and it gives you a QR code to take a picture with with your phone, Android or iPhone. The confusing part about it is, is in their book that comes with this, it tells you the default code is 0000. Now that is true, the default code to unlock the bike so that you can ride it is 000, but to get into the menus, it is a different code which they do not have in their book, and that code is 2020. So the code that you need to get into the menu system and access the Bluetooth connectivity features is 2020. Once you get into the Bluetooth settings by the 2020 code, then you can go in there and link it with your phone. So that was some little headache. If you have this bike out there, there's your cheat code. Um, also, with the, when you put in 2020, you can tell it to turn off. I hate having to enter a four digit code every time I turn the bike on, because I lock it with a steel cable and, to begin with. So you can turn off the four digit password required uh, to make the bike move. So anyway, the app is Bike Go, and it has cool turn by turn navigation features. So let's hop on this bad boy and see how it rides. the best way ever in a hustle bustle right here you can see the pacific coast highway to our left and we're just cruising no stress not looking for parking don't have to pay for parking so uh this is the best way i've ever infiltrated into a city before to get beer and fish and chips i think it's cool just you're riding by the sand dunes by the freaking ocean That's an old sign for when people would put gas motors on a bicycle because yeah. literally i'd say three quarters of the bikes that we've seen have been e-bikes yeah, e but it's why i don't like that's why i don't like this kind it's this one's very blatant So far so good, no hiccups, and we've made it into what I think is Monterey proper. Yeah, 
Um, this has been the most amazing way to ever infiltrate a city that I have ever... <laughs> you say I infiltrate have. multiple times, like military infiltration. It is, because uh, <laughs> this area is full of coastal elites, and oh. we are not coastal elites. Uh, not so even we're, close. We're trying to play the, play the part. We got our e-bikes and stuff like that, but just look where we are. It's so pretty. they figured out we're not coastal elites we've been identified it looked like if someone opened up a can of biscuit dough <laughs> and then just stuck it vertically on the counter and then they would just kind of fold to one side you know kind of melt a little bit just lip limped over all right we're gonna go check our battery percentage on our e-bikes and see if we have enough juice to make it back uh the 12 miles or so it took to get here <laughs> should be okay hopefully the Milot has some pretty good range. All right, so I got plenty of range. Um, that's not a percentage, but the top of the bar is here and we're to here. So um, we, we probably have over 75% battery left. So no issue here with the uh, 30 amp hour uh, battery pack here. So we've got about 20 miles on this bike so far. Um, the battery uh, gives you a bar, not a percentage, but it looks like it's about 80%, um, which is doing really, really awesome because we've been riding it using a lot of this, <laughs> using a lot of the throttle. Um, one other thing we noticed were you're going to go pedal. Um, this is a seven speed uh, gear set here, and anything above 15 miles an hour, you're going to start getting some ghost pedaling. So I do wish there was a, a uh, 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 a bigger gear spread in the back to where maybe you could keep helping it, you know, up to like 20 miles an hour or so. Um, but for these bike paths, that's a perfect speed, you know, 15 miles an hour. And a lot of them are regulated for 15, so maybe that's why they geared it that way. Um, but on the throttle, we hit some abandoned sections uh, back towards the dunes, and we saw 31 miles an hour with a slight downhill. So the bike has plenty of power, and even doing those top speed tests, where we did see 31, you know, we still have a, a, a ton of battery left, probably closer to 90% battery left. Um, it is tall. It is a little bit tall, but tall and short at the same time. So like a motorcycle, um, this seat is not adjustable. So I'm 5'10", I have a 32 inch inseam. So if you had a much, much shorter inseam, you'd probably be tiptoeing on this bike and you can't just drop the seat post down like on a regular, regular bicycle not these bullpen style the other thing with that is that when you go to pedal you're not in an optimum pedal position you know on an e-bike on a moped style you know on a, a regular bicycle you want your leg to be more extended to get a full range of motion from your leg but on these moped style your your legs are kind of cramped when you're pedaling but in in theme with the kind of halloween video and the stranger things it is very comfortable to pedal standing up and we have some shots of that but if you're standing up because these bars are uh are like a atv style or bmx style bars they sit up pretty high and so when you stand up it's very comfortable to stand up and pedal on this bike you don't feel like you're arched out hunched over when you're standing up so for going up hills and stuff i just stand up and it's far easier which brings us back full circle to the bad seat so when you're standing up pedaling to get an optimum pedal position for a moped style bike your butt can take a break from the seat the only real negative I have about this whole bike is this seat. This seat is, it's poo poo. Um, <laughs> it looks very cool. It does look very cool and I like the little hump, but the hump is where your butt wants to be. And it just makes like nowhere comfortable for your butt, no matter where you move around, you just don't really ever get comfortable on the seat after about five or 10 minutes. But these are super universal, so you should be able to find another e-bike seat pretty easily. For this onward portion of the test, everything works great. The lights work great. The little horn works nice to let people know you're coming. It's more of a forklift style sound than a traditional horn, but it does have one. The one thing I have noticed that we'll see in the off-road portion of the test, which is coming later, 
the, the distance from the crank set to the ground is very tall on this bike. Uh, it's much taller than most traditional bicycles. In the city, that makes it really easy to hop curbs, cutting across parking lots and parking garages. But off-road, it also gives you ground clearance to go over rocks and logs and stuff. So we're gonna test that out. Just like that, here we are in the beautiful mountains of coastal South Carolina. Just kidding, we're still in California. Um, and before we get going on our off-road review, I wanted to go over some of the numbers that you might be interested in. Uh, so I'm gonna do a real world seat height to show you how high the seat is on this thing because it is a little high and it's not adjustable. So for a real world measurement on this seat height, we're looking at about 33 inches in the front and then your little hump in the back is about another inch, about 34 inches. And then the other interesting number is the ground clearance on this thing. Even though these are only 20 inch tall tires, um, where, the, where the bottom bracket is, is you're still getting about 10 inches of ground clearance at that bottom bracket. Um, of course, that's not taking into account your rear derailleur, but for things like popping, her, uh, popping curves and getting over obstacles, um, that 10 inches is a lot more ground clearance than a lot of like cargo style e-bikes and um, most other e-bikes we've tested. Um, but to pay for that ground clearance, you get a pretty tall seat height that's not adjustable. So now that we've got the measuring tape out of the way, let's get this thing on some of this loose gravel up here in the mountains and see how this bike does and how the full suspension works. All right, let's get a little top speed run on this thing. Uh, I don't know if you can see the speedometer, but I can and uh, see what we can hit here in the dirt. So we're gonna do throttle only and see if we can hit a top speed before we run into uh, some treacherous terrain and I have to back off. So let's roll it on real quick. 10, 16, 19, 20 miles an hour, 22, 24, 25, 26, 25, Got to back off a little bit. So that's a real world 25 miles an hour. Um, I have seen 31 out of it on the pavement when you have enough runway, um, but you, you need a pretty big long straightaway to get that 31. All right, soak that up pretty good. All right, we have found the steepest hill in the area and uh, I'm gonna see if I can climb it and we're gonna get Elizabeth to film it from up here at the top so you can really get a idea of how steep it is. And we're gonna do a throttle only pull from a dead stop. So that hill right there is what we're gonna be going up. It's about 65 degrees today and there's a slight wind at our back. Dead stop, got the hydraulic brakes on and I'm just gonna roll on the throttle. Three, two, one, go. No pedaling. No pedaling. That's nine miles an hour. That's very loose. You can hear it on the camera. That gravel's very loose. 9.5 miles an hour. 8.2. 7. 6.9. This hill's very hard to do on a traditional bicycle because you, you're constantly spinning out. Um, these big fat tires really help with that and then the rear suspension help keeps the tire on the ground also Down to 6.4 miles an hour still no codes five miles an hour It did it really Yeah, that did it that is that is impressive Moped style e-bikes are not my favorite uh, just because they're uncomfortable to pedal but The other thing that has not been an issue for us here in California But I, I bet it would be in different parts of the country where maybe e-bikes aren't so prevalent is this looks more like you're not supposed to be riding it somewhere where a more traditional styled bicycle with a more adjustable seat um, it's not going to upset so many people whether you're being illegal or not some people are going to see this and think that's a motorcycle 
um, and they're going to want to legislate you and regulate you. And uh, that's, I think, might be a problem in the future. There's a lot of kids where we live that all have these. We live in a wealthy area. Uh, we're not wealthy, but all the people we live around are. And all their kids have $10,000 Surons, and uh, they zip up and down the road, and they don't follow traffic rules, and they cut across people's yards. And I can see where people are going to see this and put it in the same category as that and want to regulate it. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, uh, but I can see this style maybe being an issue. The other thing is just make sure both of your batteries are turned on. So I thought this thing wasn't getting fantastic battery range the other day when we were uh, uh, doing the pavement portion, the in-town portion of this test. And these batteries are switched. And the switch on this side is slightly different. Um, it's just a power push button uh, on off switch. Maybe like an old desktop PC would have had a, a, a power switch like this. And I didn't have that turned on. I thought I did, so I was like, why is the battery you know, this is two batteries. It seems like I, I should have more. It's, I just didn't have that clicked on. So make sure you have both your battery switches turned on. The pedaling position, uh, as all moped style e-bikes, they're not fun to pedal. Just where your, uh, the, the ratio of where your legs are. Um, you're never gonna get a good full extension. Your knees on the top of the pedal stroke are gonna come way up high. The rear light is supposed to be a tail light uh, and a brake light and for us we can only get it to work as a brake light uh, i'm not sure why I, I saw some other reviews and they said the same thing so maybe it's a programming thing that could be fixed with a software update i did check the head unit here and it did not have any software updates available so when we linked it to our app uh, the turn by turn directions are neat especially in this price range i don't know of any other bikes that have like turn by turn directions and can connect to your phone via bluetooth the bluetooth pairing once we paired it was super easy and every time I've paired it since then, it just snaps right away. You know, some Bluetooth devices are a real pain in, pain in the butt. This particular Bluetooth hooks right up to your phone. And I think that's it for this review. It's a little heavy. Uh, it's a little longer than most moped style e-bikes, um, but you do not get that length here in the cockpit where you're riding it. All the length comes from down here and extends back. Um, so you're not getting, it's not, this part of the bike is the same size as any other electric e-bike moped style e-bike it's this the swing arm down here is where it all sticks out so it looks long but the length is all down here <laughs> uh, which stretches out the wheelbase which makes it really stable when you're riding it but it also makes it longer to load in the back of a pickup truck or maybe put in your apartment or take through a stairwell so that's just something else to keep in mind um, but anyway we've had a great time with this bike we've had zero codes I've had zero issues. The only thing that we haven't been able to figure out is how to make the tail light be on at night and not just be a brake light. But other than that, this bike's been super fun. So if you're interested, there's a link down below in the comments and you can check it out. And we'll see you guys in the next video.